Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the By the Minute MMA show. We're previewing UFC 212 today. My name is Jody Jameson. I'm joined today by Nathan Waywell. How's it going, Nathan? Hello. Good, thanks. Good. So uh, we will talk a bit about the card in a minute. I wanted to touch on a couple of news uh, items that's been coming up in the past couple of weeks. And uh, particularly, I, I want to talk about the 145 women's division, which seems to be in utter shambles. Now, Dana White said yesterday that Cyborg is going to fight on the July 29th card at UFC 214. There's not an opponent, and by the sounds of it, it obviously won't be a title fight because Jermaine Durandamy seems to be ducking her. Nathan, are they as well just getting rid of this division already? I think so, yeah. It hasn't really been a success since it came into UFC, in my opinion. And I think if you look at it overall as a whole, like, well, especially with all this stuff going on now, it's, it's just... One word describes it, shambles. It is a total shambles, because I think you, you need to build a division, and they've done absolutely nothing to build a division at the moment. And, I mean, Megan Anderson is the Invicta featherweight champion, and if they had any intention of actually building the division, then she would have been signed. But she got booked yesterday to defend the Invicta title in July. So I, do, I don't think they really... Nothing's really happened. Cyborg's contract comes up in a few months. And I know I know this doesn't work in UFC's best interest because there's money to be made in Cyborg, but I think the best case scenario right now is Bellator have made more of an effort to build their 145 division. And I think the best case scenario would be to just let her walk and sign with Bellator, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's the best solution right now for the UFC considering the current position they're in. Yeah, I was quite I was quite glad when they started the one forty five division. Not so much because I thought it was going to be strong, but just I think I think there's a lot of girls out there that um, they, they 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 may not pursue a career in MMA because they don't think there's any money on it because they can get down to one thirty five, but one forty five is possible. But I mean, they've made they've, they've made so little effort with it right now that I just, I just don't see the point. I I I, yeah. I kind of hope Cyborg signs for Bellator because. They, they will do something with her, whereas nothing's really happening at the moment. Granted, she's supposed to be fighting, like I say, on the July, on the July, well, the second July pay per view. But um, I guess we'll, I guess we'll see what happens. It's not going to be Kat Zingano because no. she's she's injured, and I actually don't know who she's going to get. So we'll play that one by ear. Um, also going on at the moment, there was a lot of talk, and this was Dana again. I think it was actually on the same interview. He seems kind of pissed off because. Demetrius Johnson doesn't seem to be willing to defend this title against TJ Dillashaw unless he gets heavily paid. I I would quite like to see this fight, to be honest. Yeah, they, I'll, uh, it's definitely a fight I'd love to see because I think the two styles will it'll it'll just make a great fight to watch. Like, uh, but do you can't you can't go against Demetrius Johnson at the moment, really? Potentially, yeah, but. I, I, I like the idea that, I mean, they, they haven't promoted Demetrius very well, and obviously his next title defence is going to be the one to break Anderson Silva's record. And Dillashaw's already came out and said, because the Cody Garbrandt fight has fallen through for the moment, he'll quite happily go up, eh, go down, sorry, to 125 to stop DJ breaking the record. So he's already pushing it that way. Um, I, I can understand Demetrius's point about the fact that TJ's never fought a flyweight before, so um, I can I can understand the argument. But if TJ did fight a flyweight, and apparently he's very confident of his ability to make the weight, he would be the number one contender right now anyway. So um, I, I I think a lot of people are accusing DJ of ducking um, yeah. Dillashaw. I don't think that's so much the case. I think he's more just trying to get paid for it. But Oh, yeah, he's trying to get as much money out of it as possible because of, like you said, the fact that it's to break the record. Or yeah, is it? It's to break, aren't it? Not tie. It's to break. Yeah, he tied against yeah. Wilson Hayes in April. So, I, I I would like to see the fight, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a hundred percent confident in picking DJ. I'm not actually, I'm not actually sure who I would pick in that fight because TJ, TJ would be the slightly bigger fighter, and he has a wrestling base that matches DJ's, and. He's a good banger on the feet, so uh, there, there's, I mean, when Demetrius fought at 135 before, he didn't really have great success. Obviously, this fight would be at 125, but he would be fighting a natural 
135 or so. Um, I think there's a part of me that would maybe pick T TJ Dillashaw in this fight, but um, I, I actually think it's going to happen because I think what we're seeing at the moment with DJ trying to get paid and uh, Dana having a go, I think it's all just the posturing as they try and set something up. I mean, I like Ray Borg, but I don't think he's ready to. Be, I, I don't think no. he's ready for Demetrius yet. No, I think. If you look at as a whole, T D was probably the most likely candidate if I had to pick someone to take down Demetrius Johnson and stop his record and and some someone to overthrow him, it probably would be him. But he's just so dominant in that in that division and no one's come close to him for a couple of years now. And I think if this fight does happen that will continue because at the end of the day, if he beats Dillashaw, I can't see he he'll he'll have the belt for another good year and a bit at least because that's his I'll be his toughest opponent it's hard to see who would beat him if he was to beat TJ Dillashaw so yeah, um, yeah but Dana's looking for this fight in August so I'm assuming it would be UFC 215 he was saying uh, he was Dana said something about this would be the first time DJ would get pay-per-view points it's obviously a pay-per-view fight they're setting up and you wouldn't set up this fight for Fox anyway so no uh, there's definitely that but I, I I would I would really like to see this fight I I don't think it's a super fight like people are trying to call it, but um, MMA is cold in 2017, and if you yeah. get if you get the Jones Cormier fight the month before, and then you get this, I think there's some intrigue to be had there. So I would yeah, like to see obviously it. without um, the two biggest names for a royal while since well December November, it's it needs a big fight which yeah. can draw a lot of people, and I think Jones Cormier and potentially this fight will because. Obviously, the, the two biggest pay-per-views were more or less in two months ago, sorry, five months in Square Garden of Common Grade, two belts. And then you had um, Ronda Rousey at 207. And so, and since many, many like, big, big fights, which potentially more MMA fans would buy. And yeah. I think these fights, like, if I wasn't an MMA fan, and I saw, like, the build-up to the jones Cormier fight especially, and you saw that, you'd be like, I want to buy that, I want to watch it. It's like it's like boxing fights for promotion, like it's not as important in UFC, but it's it's very important. I think the promotion for this fight, the fact that Demetrius Johnson could break the Anderson Silva's record and basically become one of the greatest all time, if not the greatest, that draws attention immediately. So it it's it'd be interesting to see if that happens, but I hope it does. Yeah, I, I, I definitely want to see it. And I actually do think it will happen because as much as DJ's, as much as I can understand DJ's point, he is the champion and he's got a way to defend against who the promotion puts in front of him. So the idea of him being able to actually turn down uh, this fight just doesn't seem right to me. So, yeah, I'm not... Yeah, I, I, I think it'll happen. I do think it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, did you watch much of Stockholm last week? Um, I saw Gustafsson got down on one knee at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, yeah. The, um, it was yeah. a fun card. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw, I saw a lot of highlights. I saw him to the Gustafsson fight. It did look, it looked, looked like a fun to watch. It was quite funny. I, I remember a lot of people um, talking about um, about being impressed at how much punishment to share a took, and obviously the uppercuts that Gustafsson was landing, it was just constant. Yeah, and it was like, oh, credit. Glover sticking in there, and I was and I was thinking his last fight, he got knocked out in thirteen seconds by one uppercut. <laughs> you know, it just goes to show how crazy Rumble Johnson's power was. But Gustafson looked amazing. He's got to be next in line for. The, he's got to have the winner of Jones Cormier, as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, right? definitely yeah. And I I, I I I was warming up to the idea of Jimmy Manoa getting the winner, but the way Gustafson performed, especially like. Glover Teixeira is a top-end guy. Corey Anderson's good, but he's not on that level that Manoa beat, so Gus has got to be next. But they did book Jimmy Manoa against Volkan Ozdemir uh, for the same night as the jones Cormier fight. So light heavyweight certainly getting featured in Anaheim on 214. So I, yeah. I guess I guess it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult one for Jimmy Manoa just because Ozdemir just slept Misha Serkinov in 28 seconds. I don't think anybody saw that coming. So, no. yeah, uh, it's going to be, it's certainly an interesting time. I don't think light heavyweight's stacked by any means, but there seems to be, 
a queue of contenders forming, and that's kind of positive. So it's yeah, it's granted. I'm Mauricio Shogun, who is like seventh in the rankings, which kind of shows that there isn't a huge amount of depth. But certainly the top four or five or six, considering we've lost Rumble Johnson, Ryan Bader went to Bellator, Phil Davis went to Bellator a little bit before that. Light heavyweight's in okay shape at the moment, so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So UFC 212 tomorrow night. What are you thinking of this card? I'm looking forward to it. Like it's there's a couple of fights on there. Obviously the main event is one everyone's going to be looking forward to. But there's a couple of other fights on there which I think are going to be really intriguing to see like who performs because there's a couple of fights I'm looking. At, I guess we'll come to them later where there could be fighters which big stars can go down and win 30 seconds or potentially have the biggest win of their career. You know, a lot yeah. of careers could change tomorrow night. I think. Yeah, it's, it's, and I always am a big fan of the Brazil dynamic because when they do a card in Brazil, it's up, pretty much the whole card is Brazil against the rest of the world, and it's it's quite fun. Yeah. So uh, on the main card, uh, main event is Jose Aldo defending against Max Holloway. You can call it a title unification, whatever you like. Um, I'm so torn about this fight, to be honest. It's like Max Holloway has been so impressive over the last couple of years. But I kind of feel that people have forgotten how good Jose Aldo is. And it's one of those situations where, like, Jose Aldo was so dominant for so long that people have forgotten that how good he was for Conor McDuffie out in 13 seconds. And I think it's a real shame that's all... It, it goes to show the casual nature of a lot of the MMA fan base, that, like, Aldo was undefeated for, like, 10 years. He was wrecking people. And then he got slept once by a big star and... That's all everybody seems to remember. Yeah, I think I think part of the reason for that maybe that a lot of MMA fans started watching the sport when um when after the McGregor Aldo fight and so a lot because uh, obviously that would have drawn a lot of people in because yeah. I remember it, that was that was the first time I've ever seen it like UFC and the top three like Sky Sports headlines or maybe even the top one I don't know like that the Sunday morning after it. Oh, it was everywhere. Yeah. It was everywhere. Yeah, so, it, so I think Aldo, it's a big fight for him. It's a chance if he wins that, he'll he won't obviously he'll be near that still of like, the best in the UFC mind just division, uh, um, like the pound to pound rankings. But he'll be he'll, he'll be on that way if he wins. Like I, I'm not gonna call a title unification because one, you know, it's it's not really, is it? It's it's like it's like it's like in WWE when you'd have a number one contender like if you you don't get a belt for being the number one contender uh, I, I don't know how I remember all this from the days I watched like five years ago but like I'm, it like you wouldn't get a I'm belt okay for it, the end so. of the sorry on you go yeah but yeah you, I'm not okay with it because like people like then parade around the belt like you haven't won anything. You, you've just got a shot at the main thing now, and it's like, you know, it's it's just pointless. I'm okay with interim title fights in a lot of cases for a couple of reasons. One, certainly, obviously, when you get a situation where the champion is missing an action, and that was what happened when Jose Aldo fought Frankie Edgar at UFC 200. Um, for me. I was okay with that being an interim title fight because I thought I think it was pretty clear at the time the fact that McGregor had fought, he had another fight booked and none of them were a featherweight. I was cool with that. But then the situation since then, McGregor should have been stripped of the title, but the way he got stripped of the title was basically he was... He was stripped of the title, but it felt like because the Rumble... The, the Daniel Cormier Rumble fight fell out at UFC 206, and then this was made an interim title fight just so we could have a title at the top. Because I, I think this was yeah. only like five months after Aldo had won the interim title himself. So in this situation, I, I, I didn't really like it. Although, when whether it's an interim title or not, if there's one thing I do like about it is that the fighters get paid like it's a championship fight, and I'm always cool with that. But this this... This division has been in a bit of shambles for a while, and I kind of feel like there'll be a little bit of clarity brought to it tomorrow. But I think, and UFC are certainly not not going to openly root for it that way, but I actually think it's in the best interests of the division and the company if Max Holloway wins. Yeah, I'd like to see him win. And, and the reason I say that is because I still, 
Jose Aldo, as unfair as it is, still has a bit of a stench of the 13-second knockout to the casual audience. And people still see that as McGregor's division, despite the fact he's probably never going to go back there. Um, mm. And when you look at potential title defences, it's like the, the most likely challenge to the winner of this is Frank Edgar. I don't think there's any desire to see Edgar throw in a third time, especially after no. Alvin in the first one. Um, Chad Mendes is the suspended he gave. Realistically, before McGregor, the only really two difficult title defenses, there was the second Mendes fight, and the common fight, I think was the first one in the movie. It's probably the UFC one. Hominick's long retired and Mendez is suspended. So, um, Duho Choi might have been a shot, but then he lost to Cub Swanson. Um, Cub Swanson probably isn't there yet. Um, whereas Holloway against Edgar would be a fresh matchup. And it would feel like a changing of the guard. You know what I mean? So, I think, I think, there's, mm. a part, I think there's a part of the UFC and part of a few people that think it's probably better for the division if Holloway wins this fight. But um, I do think more people will pick Max Holloway to win this fight because of the Aldo McGregor factor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, enti- it's, it's entirely, it's entirely, entirely unfair. But um, I still think people don't realise how good Jose Aldo really is. Yeah, it's like you, you need to, if you haven't, just YouTube Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo pre Conor McGregor because he was unbeatable. But, yeah, um, like I think I think he made seven title defenses in a row, and like I say, th- there was only two that were any trouble. Mendes dropped him in the first round in the second fight, but then Aldo came back and dropped him in the same round. Um, and Hominick, it was more a case of. Aldo started to tire towards the end of it, and Hominick started to make a comeback. Aldo had a lead that he didn't give away, essentially, but for a guy who was always a noted cardio freak, he got tired awfully quickly in that fight. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I get a feeling that, Al, that Holloway is probably going to win this fight um, maybe late on with a TKO, but I would not be in the least bit surprised if Aldo does what he did to Frankie Edgar and just wins a lopsided decision. So it's a tough, mm-hmm. tough, tough fight to call. I, I, it... I'm seeing, I'm seeing decision, but I'm not sure whose way. It's, yeah. uh, uh, I can't see it the fight ending within the first three rounds. Yeah, the fourth round. It's yeah. more than I, I, I agree. I that. I think that. I, I, I mean, it could, but I don't see this ending before the third round. I think if you're going to get a finish, it's going to be in the championship rounds. A decision's quite likely. Um, it's it's really tough. Like it's it, this is a really tough fight to call. I think Holloway Holloway showed against Anthony Pettis and in the in the few fights recently that he's more than ready for this opportunity. And I I, I have a, I have a sneaky I have a sneaking suspicion about Holloway in this fight, but. I would, like I said, I would not be surprised if Aldo if Aldo dominates this fight, but uh, certainly interesting. That's what you want at the top of the card, something that you don't have a feel for. So I'm I'm yeah. pleased with that. Co main event is Claudia Gadeha versus Carolina Kovalkiewicz. Um for me this this is an interesting one because Claudia is such a damn good wrestler, but she tends to gas after a couple of rounds. So in terms of picking this fight, I will pick. I would pick Claudia tomorrow because it's a three-round fight. But what's kind of strange is if this was a five-round fight, I would pick Carolina. It's it's quite mm. it's quite interesting that way. But Carolina's got a great gas tank. Claudia tends to tire after a couple of rounds because she's got a really intense wrestling game. Um, Carolina Kovalkiewicz, her takedown defense is good, but it's it I, I can't remember it being tested the way it's going to be tested tomorrow and yeah. in terms of the first couple of rounds i don't think it's up i don't think she's up to the challenge of neutralizing claudia's wrestling now i i, I kind of have it in my head that claudia's going to be 2018 up on the judges scorecards after two rounds and then in the third round is where carolina can start really making an impression but She'd probably need a finish if that's what happens. The bookies have got Claudia as a heavy favourite, and I think that's fair. Although, if she was the same price and it was five rounds, I'd definitely be having money on Carolina. Mm, I 
I can see Kovacevic maybe starting the fight defensively, trying to wear wear her opponent out as the fight goes on. And by the I can see her winning it. Like like I said, she's got such strong wrestling game that you um. So she's gonna try and like knack her out, and then. Go for the kill third round, and it will either be a third round knockout win or a point decision win for Kovacevic. Yeah, for points for Kovacevic. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I, I, I mean, yeah. I think this is another situation that's kind of like when I was talking about Frankie Edgar versus Jose Aldo, is that I, I kind of think that if. If Claudia wins, she's probably the most likely candidate to defeat Joanna. Um, but, again, that's a fight that's happened twice, and Joanna won both times. Granted, the first fight was a really close split decision. I think more people thought Claudia won. The second fight, I had Claudia two rounds up before Joanna just completely took over. Um, but Carol- Carolina's fight against Joanna was quite interesting because Joanna outclassed her, but in the fourth round, Carolina rocked her. So it's difficult. Um, I I do like Claudia in this fight, though. I think that I think that Claudia's wrestling will just be too much in the first couple of rounds. So um, I would quite like to see the Polish fight again. I would quite like to see Ian Jacek and Kowalkiewicz, but. I, I, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. And anyway, I, unless unless Claudia blows the doors off Carolina tomorrow, I think Rose Nami Yunus is getting the next shot anyway, so it might be immaterial in that sense. But uh, I, I'm, I like it. I'm with you. I'd like to see the all Polish clash again because I think a lot of people have forgotten about it. Obviously, it's on the same card as the big Alvarez McGregor fight. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I certainly haven't forgotten about it, but I think a lot of people have. Like, it was a good fight, and I think <laughs> a second fight would be. I think part of the reason some people have forgotten about that is because there was three title fights. It was the first one on. The second one blew everybody's mind. The first Woodley Wonderboy. We don't need to talk about the second one, obviously. Oh, and then, yeah. Obviously, McGregor's performance was tremendous. So it did kind of get a little bit lost in the shuffle of that card. But um... See, I don't know. I've, I've completely forgot about the Woodley Thompson first fight. I don't know how. It was like it was Maybe that's because the second fight was just completely like taking me off the rivalry between them. It just yeah, erases all memory. It was dreadful, wasn't it? Um, yeah, well, I, I, I like this fight, I'll be honest. But, um, I was tempted to have it on Kobalki just because she's such a long price, but I didn't in the end. I'll tell you who I bet on uh, <laughs> in a minute. So Vitor Belfort takes on Nate Marquardt. There seems to be a little bit of confusion about Vitor's contract situation. Vitor thinks this is his last fight. Dana said that he needs to read his contract because he's got one more after that. Um, it seems most likely that Vitor is going to end up fighting in something like Ryzen in Japan after this, to be honest. But I guess we'll see what happens. Um, basically, Vitor, if Vitor doesn't win this fight by KO in the first two minutes, I like Marquardt. And Marquardt has gone in as a big underdog. A reasonably big underdog. So, mm. I, I, have no, I have no enthusiasm in betting on me, but I think it's done. I've taken it. Um, I see. Um, I think Belfort is not done, and I think I think it will go end within the first two minutes, and okay. I think Belfort's gonna KO or TKO win in Spot within it. the first two minutes. I do, yeah, if if that, I I don't see a path to victory for Belfort if he doesn't get to him quickly. Because what's happened in Belfort's last couple of fights, uh, there was the the Kelvin Gastelum fight at Fortaleza, and there was the Gaygard fight in Manchester, and both times it seems like Belfort gets off to an okay start, but after a few minutes he becomes very hitable, and I think that he just becomes so vulnerable after the first couple of minutes that I don't think he can win the fight if he doesn't finish it very early. Yeah. So that's that's kind of why I like Marquardt. I think Marquardt. Marco is smart enough to stay on the outside and make Vitor chase him, I think. But, um, I mean, Marco has old himself. He's 38. So, um, I, 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 I was surprised to see Vitor be such a strong favourite for this fight. Yeah. No, no, I'm I'm not surprised he's such a strong favourite, but I am surprised in a way if you get what I mean. Because, yeah, yeah. overall, in my opinion, he is a stronger fighter. But, 
you can't rule Marquardt out, I don't think. And so that's why I'm surprised the bookies in particular are going Belfort, it, it leaning towards Belfort getting the oh, win. Yeah. But it'll be interesting. I'm um, last. I think Belfort won't win for two minutes, but who knows? There's a part of me that wants Vitor to win this fight just because it would be, in some ways, a nice send off depending on what's going on with his contract stuff. Vitor's a legend, you know. He's been in UFC oh, for yeah. donkey's years. So I would quite like to see him get the win. I just, I, personally, I just don't see it here. But like I say, first two minutes, if he if he clips them, then then he could easily do the business. Um, Paolo Boracina and Oluwale Bamboshi. Um, this was the other one I've had a bet on. Boracina just looked unbelievable in his debut. Uh, Bamboshi is probably a, a, a middle-of-the-road middleweight, whereas Boracina, I think, could be on to big things. And So I took it as a double. Boracina is a pretty short price, but I can't see past him. And I'm actually really glad because nah. he was on Fight Pass at Fortaleza. And he, I, I, in fact, I think he was the very first fight of the night. And he just blew the doors off his opponent. I'm trying to remember who he faced. Um, it, was, it was quite painful. Um, Gareth McClellan, 117, um, 1 minute 17 TKO. Um, he just destroyed him. And he didn't destroy him in a way where it was like, well, look who he destroyed, even though Gareth McClellan's just that kind of guy that I don't think a lot of people rate very highly. But he just looked so skillful doing it that I think he's on the big things. And Bamboshi's okay, but... I don't think you can live with this guy. Nah, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing a Bora China win um, easily, and I think you you win this. Well, yeah, I will defend the name also, so yeah. I think you made you made a head of the shot, and it's that one boy should buy us, get in the car, go to the end shop, and go, and then finally get there, the fight will be over, and you can collect winnings. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's true. I, 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 I think he's going to finish his own Oh, yeah. yeah. If he doesn't, um, if I won't go very like, saying, well, is the other Yeah, uh, yeah, but I would say it was on the first time. Not that I'm saying he's going to be champion or anything like that, but he had one of those, I was like, like I need to see this guy again. I'm looking for definitely looking for that tomorrow. Um, and the opener on the guard, I think it's shoulder bars, Mike. Um, and Yancey Medeiros don't really feel for this. A of a win. I'm, I'm a big fan of this fight, though. I think we, I, I'm always in that situation where I like to put... I, I always like the idea of putting on an exciting fight to open the pay-per-view. And I, I was bitching and moaning about it last time when it was um, Christoph Yotko and David Branch, and I said it was going to be boring. And I, I, I had no idea how boring it would be. It was dreadful. But this should be the exact opposite. This should be exciting. Eric Silva um, is is wild to watch. Yancey Medeiros isn't that far behind. I don't, ha- I don't have a pick by any means, but I'm excited for this one. <laughs> It's one of those fights which are really unpredictable. Like yeah. it, it like they're both just so unpredictable and exciting to watch. And I think overall, like obviously, two exciting fighters make one superb fight. And yeah. this will be one, and it'll be a great way to pay for you. But I'm going for an Eric Silva third round knockout. I, I I I think a third round knockout in this fight seems quite apropos. I just. This feels like a t- this feels like the type of fight that could be exciting, could be one to one on the judges' scorecards, needing somebody to just make something happen in the third round, and then it happens big style, and that that wouldn't surprise me at all in this fight. Mm. And I, 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 when I look when I look up and down this card, I can't find anything else that sh- that is better place to open up the paper. It seems like a weird really way to open. Yeah. So with the card, the, 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 the prelim featured bout is amazing. Javier Lasung Sao and Marlon Moraes. Marlon Moraes has just came over from World Series of Fight and he's, he's not really been that well promoted, but he was a champion over there for a while, and uh, Asung Sao is a high-level bantamweight, so that's that's a great fight, potentially. Antonio Carlos Jr. and Eric Spicely, Johnny Eduardo, Matthew Lopez, Ayuri Alcantara versus Brian Kelleher. Kelleher's a guy from Ring of Combat who's making his UFC debut. The Featured bout on Fight Pass, Vivian Pereira and Jamie Moyle. I interviewed Jamie Moyle about a month ago. Uh, I'll leave the link below on YouTube. Check it out on the channel as well. Uh, Luan Chagas and Jim Wallhead and Marco Beltran versus Division Figueiredo. I'll be honest, apart from Chagas, the first 
the, the first two fights, I'm not very clued up on any of them. I've seen Beltran fight, mm-hmm. but I'm going to need to go back and check it out again because I can't really remember. So, yeah. yeah. Um, right, so that's UFC 212. Starts at half 11 UK time tomorrow night. I'll have all the live coverage on by the minute. And if you, um, depending on how I feel, we will probably do a live post-fight show as soon as the main event wraps up, but we'll see. I was destroyed uh, after UFC 211, so we didn't bother that time. So, um, yeah. Are you are you staying up for the card this weekend? Um, Yeah, I'm on after. Um, I th- I'll, hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll put this way. Last time I tried to so it was last night for the end, game one of the NBA Finals, and I'll just... You get to about half 11, and there's a point where, like, if you if you go past it, you are all go. Yeah. If you don't get past it, you just it's game over. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who won? I, I, I'm not sure. I might. What I might do is I might perhaps go to sleep early and then get up for main card. Yeah. Who won? Um, Cat Golden State absolutely breezed it. It was. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people predict that they might sweep this series, so I guess we'll see. But I don't uh, think it'll sweep it. Um, yeah. but yeah, it will certainly be. Uh, I think it'll quickly fall to Golden State win, I think. There it you is. go. Like, like it, it was is. a couple of years ago. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we should wrap up just now because I'm noticing the time and I know you need to be off ski. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, UFC 212, by the minute call tomorrow. We'll have all the live coverage you need. Uh, just follow along with us. And yeah, Nathan, thanks very much for joining me. Cheers. See uh, maybe for a re- another review show if there isn't one straight after. Yeah, uh, we'll, figure, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Just let me know what you're doing tomorrow, and we will speak to you again sometime. Cheers. Uh, see you.